buyer. Mm -hmm. He can also undertake to look into this 40B, even though it will be delayed because the town has a, you know, a delay now. It's already got at least one project that's permitted. So there, those are still real options, and they're a problem because there is a profit attached to those options. That's why we're having difficulty here. That's why I'm asking you to try to look at something now. It may not work, but try to look at something for the Maytown meeting because a resolution that's satisfactory, at least, is at, that it's at least a decent alternative to the institutional sale or the 40B sale would still be good to have on the table. And it might promote further discussion and an even better development in the end run. I mean, it may, maybe something different would still be chosen. So what is your timeline? And looking at it from your client's perspective, you've, you've heard from Eric as far as how they would like to, how they see themselves moving forward to town meeting. How are you looking at that? We're certainly willing to work on anything, of course, leading up to town meeting. There is a June deadline on the, on the sale to the church. So that's why I'm talking about them, this now. I know the condominium working group wants to try to see if they can come up with some kind of zoning for October. I don't know whether that would even apply to this area mm -hmm. or whether it would, you know, we'd have the same problem basically trying to come up with a proposal there. Okay. Uh, but there is this June deadline and that's the problem for, uh, that I'm presenting to you. I want you to be aware of it. You may not be able to do much about it, but you need to be aware of it. Uh, Mike, Eddie, do you have any questions? Uh, I just lost track of that last one, but what is the June deadline? You a church has made an offer on the property. It's good until okay. June. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and is, is there a commitment on the part of the developer to meet with anyone that wants to meet with them at this point? Sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marion. Um, so we're going to hear from, I see a hand right there. I know you've been waiting to speak, but we're going to start to hear from members okay. of the public. And come on up, please. Mm -hmm. And again, identify yourself into the sure. microphone. Hi, I'm Judy George. I live at 52 Ford Ranch Road, which is, uh, for me, the project would be in front and right beside my home. The street, would, the lot that they bought was right next to me. So I'm very, uh, I've had uh, at least seven meetings with Mr. Hamilton without lawyers. And in those meetings, I um, was asked by a neighbor to meet with him, given that he had in the past known of my company and actually had worked for it. So we at least had a uh, reason to be partly friendly. But it was pretty clear, you know, what his intent was. He was very angry about uh, the path that he couldn't build the three homes. And... Um, felt as though it's 40B or nothing, and it wasn't anything unless we could come up with uh, so many millions of dollars to buy it. So we ha tried um, and began to try to communicate how important. I mean, you just heard the historic society, brilliant what they're doing, the whole town. And I don't know what's happening to our town. I've lived here 50 years, paying taxes, raised four children. But it seems like we're development driven right now. And I do need to think we have to come into the 21st century, as was said to me. And a lot of pressure has been put on me by town officials, every town official that had a reason to call me about, be, you know, be reasonable, Judy, because Mr. Hamilton had communicated that it, my original concept that John and Eric and the team work was eight homes. We were so excited that you passed this fabulous zoning. Was it called cluster zoning? I thought that was such a wonderful, for the planning board to come up with something so that we could rush back and give Mr. Hamilton something, okay, you didn't get your three houses, but now we got eight that we hoped, and we really felt strongly that we had something. Uh, Mr. Hamilton asked me to write uh, a conservation letter that um, I was happy that, that at some point that brook dried up. Uh, Mr. Lawton and I both wrote letters on behalf. And then uh, last September, he, um, he proceeded to tell uh, both myself and John that um, he wasn't going to look at the, it, there was no money for both him and Mr. Fandry, and they were going to move down the path of 
a 45 development condo. I don't even want 22 condos, but I was at least willing to be open that if, if we're going to keep the density issue, I think we tried desperately because the town needed taxes. Uh, maybe we'd have a chance of having some control over what happened. And uh, he did tell us personally that he was, uh, wouldn't even look, never looked at the eight development that they decided there was no money to be made. And then when we came up with this 22 development, um, it was painful for me because it's all gonna drive by me. I, I went with it for the reason of, I was terrified to be honest with you, that if we lost total control, I don't know what was gonna happen there. But um, he proceeded to tell Mr. Lawton, John, after he got our proposal that he'd see us in 30 months. And that was his answer. What happens in 30 months? Does anybody know? I mean, that was his question. I, I couldn't figure out what the 30 months meant. That might have just been a comment. But that's how he left it with Mr. Lawton. I'll see you in 30 months. And then we had this meeting, and there's going to be a lot of people here. And there is an interest in a, someone who is willing, I think, to come up with uh, a proposal to buy the land. That's why they want the continuation. Is that right, Brian? I, have, I don't have anything to do with the continuation. I have no oh, idea what's um, going on. Yeah, I That's have not, just, I have not I've been. Either. I've learned about it when I walked in, the, when I, I sat down at the table tonight. I've, so I've been, no uh, my, I've had my husband in the hospital for the past few days, so I just learned of it too. But I was so taken with the idea that somebody could come up with the kind of money that could possibly buy the land and build single homes. Mm -hmm. I, I was just thrilled. That would be a miracle for me. So I only represent a little bit. Eric has really worked really hard on this to try to be fair to everybody. And I just want to commend him because he knows how, how I feel. And he's tried to work on behalf of the whole neighborhood. So I feel very fortunate. And I'm dying to hear about from the other neighbors. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. thank you for doing that cluster zoning. Thank you. Your hand first, and then I saw another hand over here. So. Um, I'm here tonight in a number of capacities. You just identify yourself for the record. Yeah, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, Denny Swenson, 65 Green Street. Um, I'm the president of the Friends of Blue Hills, uh, the president of the Friends of Hemingway Woods. It seems that three of the neighborhoods, there are a number of neighborhoods that could be impacted by this, so I'd like to bring that to the table as well. But three of the neighborhoods that are most in play in relation to this condominium article seem to abut or be very, very close to the Blue Hills and Fowl Meadow. But I'm also here because I live in one of the neighborhoods that could be most negatively impacted if some of this language were to get pushed through the town meeting process. Um, we understand there's 40B pressure in pockets all over the town. Um, I, I live in the, in the neighborhood where the former Milton Muse site was. You remember me. Um, we've experienced that pressure for a number of years, and we're in full empathy for all of the other spots in town uh, that are going through this. Um, we understand the town needs affordable housing, but that doesn't mean that every parcel of land that could be assembled into a 15-acre lot is necessarily a good place for condominium development. We believe that the Milton Muse eventually walked away from our neighborhood because it abutted Fowl Meadow, and the land itself has so many conservation challenges to it, wetlands and an area of critical environmental concern, um, the community's water filtration system, rare species habitat, and I could go on and on. Um, so while we're thrilled that Milton Muse walked away, the developers are still circling, and the next goal we are told is uh, condo development. We're told that they plan to take this language, if approved through this town meeting process, to our neighborhood. The conservation issues in our neighborhood have not changed, yet we would have to go through the whole process of fighting back overly aggressive development in our neighborhood all over again. Some parcels lend themselves to condo development, and where there is neighborhood support for that, 
I would support the neighbors on that. But with town-wide language, it, it is imperative to start by doing no harm. We can acknowledge the pressure of 40B and still think of ways to acknowledge and protect historical treasures, unique and special ecosystems, areas, and rare species habitat. So we, while we as a town embark on a crusade to make it easier to develop varied types of housing, it's important not to give away the farm to the developers. So if the finalized language requires that, this is just one example, if the finalized language were to require that 50% of the land remain open, I would urge 80% of the land in, er in an area of critical environmental concern be left open. There must be a higher threshold if the land is within an ACEC. Another example would be in Section 6 for determining the number of units. Currently, uh, the formula in the hillside neighborhood is described as two units per non-wetland acre of land. Um, just like wetland shouldn't be considered buildable, any rare species habitat should not be included in the calculation as if that's buildable land. So protective language needs to be incorporated into any document that goes before town meeting. I've been to the last two condo committee meetings and it is clear to me that the Ford Ranch Road neighborhood off of Hillside is under incredible pressure. Um, my understanding is that Mary McKetrick, who's working for the developer owner um, that has threatened 40B and the church, has, has drafted an article and then an amendment to that article and the neighbors have come, <laughs> have to come up with a new reversioned article response in a very, very short time window what they are willing to compromise on while they are under this incredible time pressure and 40B pressure is not a good way to develop language that will apply to every other large parcel of land in the town. It would appear that our town's future condo development is being defined by this one neighborhood that is under stress. So while we all know that 40B gets to wipe out local zoning, now in effect, if we are to go forward with this, we're doing the same thing to ourselves with an overly broad and as yet poorly drafted condo article. This article would leave neighborhoods across the town to fend for themselves against overly aggressive 40B development and now overly aggressive condominium development. I would suggest that we cannot cast away local zoning and decades of natural resource protection in one quick sweep. There are generations of people that have gone before us who protected this area from the highway interstate going through there are generations before us that registered historic structures and scenic ways all around us. And there are generations before them from Native American and Paleolithic times that have left amazing resources all around us. This gives us great reason for pause and reflection before taking a sweeping and insufficiently tailored approach to this proposed article. I've, pro I've provided some suggested language uh, through Tim. We've got it, yes, thank okay. you. Um, that would be beneficial to the principles that I've described here. These are important not only to our neighborhood, but other neighborhoods and to the town's future generations. Thank you for your Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir, and I'll just remind everybody we will be continuing this to April 23rd. I checked the date. And also, we do have another public <coughs> hearing tonight. So. Just keep that in mind. Introduce sure. yourself. Uh, Paul Krasinski, 5 Stonehill Lane, and I'm representing a broad base of the neighborhood of the Hillside Neighborhood Association. Um, obviously, this has been a long and arduous process, I think, for everyone, all parties involved in the process. Um, it was brought to the subset of the neighborhood's attention, all of the history. Um, and while all members of the Hillside Neighborhood Association were not present, uh, we were able to learn all of the details of this history in this kind of arduous way. Um, I do think, though, that there, the neighborhood is not prepared at this moment to um, be pro or against either or any of the options at the moment, whether it's 45, whether it's 24, uh, whether it's eight, whether it's three. I think we requested more time in order to evaluate all of our options. And I think that um, I had a conversation with John Lawton, who is representing the Scotts Woods Protection Fund um, as most recently as last night. Um, today I had an opportunity to speak directly with uh, the developer, Mr. Todd Hamilton, about other creative solutions that uh, may be possible in this space. I think certainly, we need to keep the emotions out of this um, opportunity. 
Um, I think there's no question that this is a business transaction, as Marion had highlighted, where it's about maximizing profit, but also minimizing the impact on the neighborhood. Um, and while those discussions uh, with Mr. Hamilton were preliminary, um, I do feel like they were productive. Uh, we were able to talk about uh, a number of different topics that would be interesting both to both sides. And I can say I don't know how far apart we are. It's actually um, less about you know units and dwelling types, which certainly not being a developer, real estate expert, uh, I wasn't able to talk about that um, well. But I will tell you that um, from a business perspective, understanding that you know, there's financial return and there's impact, um, we were able to discuss that and we will continue to have those conversations. So from the point of the timeline, I think the neighborhood senses the urgency. I think certainly we want to motivate. I think coming out of the Monday meeting, we highlighted one, you know, the hillside neighborhood is not anti-development as though um, I think we at times get perceived that way. Um, we certainly are for development where there is um, land and zoning laws that are you know, in um, discussion and are followed. Um, but that to say, I think we need a little bit more time in order to discuss this a bit further, continue the direct dialogue. Uh, Mr. Hamilton has continued to support getting together um, having that conversation and so I would just urge here that we we continue this dialogue which you are saying till the 23rd uh, and enable us to look at all of those options because obviously it's an important decision not just for the Hillside Neighborhood Association but for the town of Milton and I think it will set precedent so you know certainly understanding the business requirements of you know the owner and the developer but also the impact for the Hillside Neighborhood Association. I, I was actually pleasantly surprised with you know, the reception thus far and the early conversations. So those will continue. Uh, I would think that we will have you know, more discussions you know, this week into next week. Certainly knowing that there's a meeting on the 23rd, we wanna provide the Hillside Neighborhood Association with a formal um, brief as a neighborhood with a formal invite that will go out from our secretary, Robert Musi. Um, that goal is to have that meeting next week uh, where we'll look at all of our options and understand the, the impacts, the variables, and the coefficients on that, at that time. So I just wanted to share with you kind of where we are and you know, what the timing looks like um, and that we are in direct conversations with the developer at this time. And I do think there are a number of creative solutions in addition to the great works that um, the Scotts Woods Protection Fund has done and John Lawton and Eric and Judy have done a great job coming up with um, that. But I think that it was um, ill-advised to uh, commit to any option at this time uh, given time pressure. Um, but we do sense the, the urgency. We will turn this around um, in relative short order and try to give you an update at the 23rd meeting. Hopefully it's you know, progressing in a direction that we all feel is positive. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody else wish to speak to this tonight? Yes, sir, please come forward. Uh, my name's Nick Benke. Uh, I live at 60 Hemingway Drive, which is in Canton, but I also have an address, 1359 Brushell Road in, uh, in Milton. That's where I get my, uh, my energy bills and star. Uh, but I'm here uh, to, as a director to represent Friends of Hemingway Woods. And um, I just want to explain a little bit uh, what that is. It's a 501c3 corporation that's organized to promote and conserve the natural, scenic, and historical resources of Fowl Meadow, Blue Hill, Little Blue, Hemingway Woods, and Avenue A areas of the towns of Milton and Canton, Massachusetts, to foster the use and enjoyment of these areas and neighborhoods in a manner consistent with the protection and preservation of the environment to engage in such educational, scientific, and charitable activities as will assist in this preservation. Uh, the group um, has been very active initially with uh, the Milton Muse uh, project uh, and uh, thanks to this committee, I think, in the town of Milton uh, and the town of Canton uh, that was successfully uh, uh, toward it, so thank you for that. Um, what I wanted to uh, talk about really is that the parcel of land that uh, Hemingway Woods specifically is in 
is part of the ACEC. It's part of the Fowl Meadow ACEC. That is the oldest area of critical environmental concern, and it is the largest uh, and the most um, valuable area. And this is the Secretary of State of, of Massachusetts making those comments. Um, so this uh, article that is being proposed uh, would seem to impact very negatively. It really takes the place of a 40B uh, coming into the neighborhood after we've just gone through all the reasons why that was inappropriate. Uh, just to remind ourselves, um, this area uh, of Hemingway Woods has three contiguous habitats of mature upland forest, open fields, meadows, marshy floodplains, and they come together in Hemingway Woods. The site has been the target, as we know, for Milton Muse and other developments. This is open space and has been pristine and preserved since prehistoric times. When you take into consideration the septic or sewer system, sidewalks, plantings, parking areas, and the like, the reality is that while the density of Milton Mews would have been greater, the footprint that would be allowed by the kind of development that we're talking about with the condominium proposal uh, would be roughly the same. So it would take away endangered species habitat, water filtration and open space uh, and change of, uh, in this in this would cause change for this forever in this unique area uh, consequently um, the friends of Hemingway Woods we could only support this article if it was tailored to avoid some of these unacceptable results and I think you've heard some of those recommendations already Can I ask a question <clears throat> um, the comments that you're directing with regard to the Hemingway Woods Milton Muse area, which are you speaking about the article that was submitted and that's in front of town meeting at this point? Well, I've read a couple awards? of articles and uh, um, <clears throat> there, so I've read several articles, I guess. There's, a, uh, there's an article that the I think the planning board agrees is you know it, it can be applied to the town wide. Every every site in town, regardless of size, and and I think that we've, we we've are, voiced we have, significant yes. concern about that, and have suggested we would not endorse that. So I'm just I'm just, and you can answer as well. well I would Danny, echo just some I'm of the others have said here. I think we need a little bit more time to really understand. Yeah. Understood. What's understood. I, I'm just You're curious. Not the only ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're all I've in heard, the same boat. Know, yeah. Five, four per acre plus a bonus, five per acre. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is that it? Thirty percent open space. I think I mean, actually both articles might end up applying. I'd have to check the Hemingway parcels, but I yeah. think I think all of the proposals that are currently out there, Counting. in addition to the one that's yeah. on the warrant, may could end up uh, being yeah. applicable. Okay. So, yeah. and, and John Cronin, as I was leaving the last conduct committee meeting with the two versions, Marion's and the yeah. Hillside neighborhood, yeah. um, they're. There are intentions to um, assemble properties, yeah. f from what I'm being told, um, in that. Yeah. And that's, that's actually one of the problems with the article that's in front of town meeting is because it doesn't place any restriction on parcel assembly. You could um, get yourself quite a large development. Uh, and, and one of the con one of the yeah. con comments that came out of the condo committee was was limiting it to existing parcels, not future assemblages. Right. Um, you know, I think. Clearly, I well, I, I, I might be getting into the condo comment territory, but I know the condo bylaw committee is very concerned about uh, and does not feel that the town is in any position at the moment to produce a general condo bylaw. So um, the so, uh, the conversation that this group is having, meaning the planning board and the people in this room, was really geared around this article that was put forward with the intention of applying to a single site, and there's been efforts to reduce it back to that level. Obviously, we can't do it for a specific site, but we've been trying to constrain it in a way that would be very limited. Um, so obviously, you know, that's something that we'll want to look at because- See what else it could apply we're not, to. Uh, yeah. The condo bylaw committee ha has made it very clear that it does not feel like it's ready to, pr to propose a general bylaw. Um, I don't feel that the, I, I'm, I'm speaking as a planning board member and a member of that committee, I agree with that sentiment. I don't believe that enough study has been done and that enough comments have been taken and enough, and enough work has been done. So just, I'm just responding to both of you specifically that it's, you know, um, I, I just wanted some clarity on where your comments were coming from, that's all. From, from your understanding, well, it's hard in these situations, but I've, I've been told that the plan is 
from um, someone in the neighborhood that the plan is to take this article and apply it to our neighborhood. Okay. Certainly if the article that's in front of, the actual article that's in front of the town meeting, Article 48, passes, that would be absolutely applicable, applicable. to your neighborhood as well as every other neighborhood. Yeah. 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 But you're also talking about the McKetrick Amendment or the Hillside Proposal. All three. It, All three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I was saying. That I think those yeah. also yeah. would yeah. apply. Yeah. I'd have to look yeah. at the square yeah. footage, and but I think those, given the size of the parcels in your area, I think those would also apply, and your comments especially about the ACEC. Uh, should certainly be taken into account given yeah, the yeah. And given the history of Valdez. Yeah, yeah, I agree with absolutely. that. Absolutely. And just generally, I mean, I think that's we should it's, be considering. It, it, it would appear that double A zoning would would apply, and and we would not want that to be mm -hmm. taken away from our area after all we've been through. No, these your comments, but from both of you were extremely helpful, and thank you for thank giving you. them in written form as well. So. I wanted to add, and maybe point that out, is that the neighborhood has committed. To conservation, the, the folks there mm -hmm. consider themselves real stewards of right. the, their properties. There's probably 120 acres or more that is under deed restriction. Some folks are moving to permanent deed restrictions and working with land trust, etc. So mm -hmm. they're putting this area in perpetuity in conservation, which is really where it should be headed because it's in the middle of the Blue Hills Reservation mm -hmm. and it's in the most sensitive area. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Anybody else who wishes to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing none, Brian, I'm going to ask you for a quick yeah. update on the condo. Uh, it's very quick, Emily. I think at this we'll point, I mean, I think that we, we have, the condo committee has submitted bylaws for everyone to review here um, that'll be part of the record that um, on the different articles, there are comments from individual committee members. Mm -hmm. There is a general um, summary of where our conversations went. The committee uh, generally, um, we, we literally uh, in our last meeting went back and forth between the two uh, submitted versions um, and made comments on each. In some cases, we actually preferred one over the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, those comments are somewhat self-explanatory. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through them because it yeah. sounds like there may be some more, changes, some more to yes, come. Exactly. So. Um, Needless to say, we did we did weigh in on it, and I, I would just reiterate that uh, in, you know the condo committee is uh, very concerned that it is sort of being put into a position where it needs to be making comments on this bylaw, in in the sense that it doesn't feel like it's prepared to make a general bylaw right now, which was really what it was originally charged yes. with. Yes, yeah. um, and so the comments that are coming are specifically coming with some concern about that, and also. Uh, on the basis that they're, you know, they're really being directed towards a particular site, which is a question of whether or not we can even zone that way. So, uh, I think I'll leave it at that. But okay, well, our comments are available. I would say thank the members of the condo committee on behalf of the planning board because, given the fact that you all have been looking at this issue for quite some time, we felt it was important that we get a sense from people who have been exploring this as to what their thoughts would be, Emily. What do we have on the 23rd? I know we have the sign by law public hearing. Is that at 645? I believe so, yes. That would probably make sense. So, All right, so then let's continue this to 7 o'clock on the 23rd. Um, for the people who are arranging various meetings, if you could keep the planning department, uh, Tim and Emily, informed as to what's going on just so we can be updated, that would be really helpful. And we look forward to seeing you all on the 23rd. Thank you. Transition to the public hearing on Thayer. Yes. Well, I should probably tell somebody. <laughs> should we, should we, so should we have, uh, announce that? I don't know. Should I? Maybe. <laughs> might, might be useful. I don't know. It is really hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of hot air. <laughs> All sides. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> what happened? So you should be so good. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. I'm turning it back there for a few hours. You're very welcome. It's always nice getting a plan of uh, what 
that I love that. that. That's a great plan. Yeah. yeah. The window. Yeah. Property, a historic property in town. That's a big one. You might have to add that to your collection. I was going to say, frame this one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this gate house is one of my favorite houses in Malta. Really? I'm so thrilled this is going to be preserved. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it would have been such a, such a loss. I, I love the, I mean, I love the one across the street. I love the old stables. Oh, that's, that's gorgeous. Yeah. I was divided. I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know. I'm, I thought it was divided. Too, but maybe, okay. it maybe someone converted it. So, yeah. <coughs> Here you are. Thank you. <coughs> Um, while we're still in a little bit of a transitional period, I have yes. two announcements for the planning board. Oh, okay, good. Um, one is that, actually, I think this might be Emily Martin's last meeting with us. What? She is uh, taking the place of, what is it, the executive secretary to the board of selectmen. She'll be starting training on Monday. <laughs> wait, 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 let me, let me just get this straight. The board of selectmen poached you. <laughs> yeah. wow. So, uh... The, the planning board is, is like a farm system for, uh, for, for the board of selectmen. So the big some, uh, there will be some comments about that. I believe there's yeah. an election coming up. Right? Yeah, really. <laughs> um, well, so, Emily, congratulations. Thank you. To congratulations, you. Emily. I Great think news, that uh, uh, the selectmen are going to be quite pleased. Yes, I oh, would yes. say so. But we're going to have words with them. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> no, so, Bill will, already told me we need we to will, talk. We will, we will do the necessary. From an administrative perspective, uh, send things to me in the meantime. Okay, uh, fair enough. Be, uh, and so are we preparing an advertisement? Yeah, uh, it, it was posted uh, today internally, posted internally today. yeah. Okay, and great. you guys still have me. I'm doing about 10 hours a week just to kind of keep things running in the meantime. Thank you. So. Thank you. And then my, uh, my second announcement is that on um, April 18th, um, I think it's April 18th, the Conservation Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals is doing a joint site walk of the 711 Randolph Ave um, 40B site. Okay. Um, I think they're meeting in the DPW yard at 8 a.m., um, but I can send out a absolutely certain uh, schedule on that. Perfect, um, please do. Yeah. Date, date on that, Tim, please. Um, uh, April 18th, it's Saturday, so a week from a week from this coming Saturday. 8 o'clock in the morning? 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, I, I can assure you. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll confirm the time <laughs> okay. and date. Okay. And <laughs> okay, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, start the Fair Nursery continued hearing. And Mr. Corcoran, we seem to have a request for an amendment to the uh, to the application. Is that correct? You want us to approve a amended application? Yes, we um, filed. Could I speak uh, uh, for Matt Dunn uh, simply because? Yes, you may. As soon as he finishes, we will recognize you. This one, right. we don't even agree that it's appropriate. Well, just listen to Mr. Carcran, and then you can, we will hear you. How about that? Good evening. Um, Ned Corcoran on behalf of Maggie and Josh Oldfield um, and the Oldfield family who are the applicants for the special permit. Um, we filed um, really a, essentially in response to what I think Emily's comments were driving at at the last hearing is um, which uses are we really applying for for the special permit. Um, Maggie and Josh spent a fair amount of time and we filed um, a revised version essentially moving some of the items that were in section three over to section two and more hopefully more clearly defining those items that uh, for which the special permit is being requested. 
Yes, and in fact, I should disclose that Maggie Oldfield approached me and asked me to clarify in writing what my objections were, my concerns were, so that they could address that with, uh, with a written amendment, or probably not a writ uh, an amendment, but a clarification of what it was. I do still have some questions on what was given, but just to let you know that I had that interaction. So the old fields prepared um, an amended uh, an amendment or an amended version and uh, submitted, I think, a clean and red line mm -hmm. version. So we could, it was clear what was being proposed. We have one further um, clarification with respect to language that is now in section two. And that is that um, where they suggest that an artisan market might be appropriate under the bylaw, they now understand that artisan market probably is not acceptable under the bylaw, so would move to strike that reference to the artisan bylaw, artisan market, which is in section two, um, e. small e. Two e. Yeah, two D needs to also be stricken. That is not allowed under. Uh, Two definition of landscaping business permissible activities. So 2D and 2E both need to be stricken. Um, I'm going to take that one under advisement and be prepared to discuss that. That's fine. I'm just letting you know. Those are my I understand the, yeah. your, your position you can, with if, respect if to that. You, if we allow the uh, amended application, and, and this is the way we would work on this sort of thing, that when you want to revise your application, you can't just revise it. You have to actually ask the board if you can revise it. Uh, and, you know, we will, uh, we will consider it. But here you've, you've made a request, mm -hmm. and we have, uh, uh, I think we have some opposition. Mr. Johanning, why don't you come and join us and, uh, and, uh, Introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Phil Johanning, 23 Parkwood Drive. Um, my attorney, Matt Dunn, uh, wasn't able to be here tonight, so he asked me to read uh, an email that he had written to you on April the 8th and a memorandum which he wrote to you today. Uh, does everyone have copies? No. No. I think so. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, quickly read them and then I will give them to the secretary. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Alex, I am in receipt of the latest version of the Thayer Nursery application for a special permit. Attached, please find a copy of, the, uh, of a red line copy that Ned Corcoran sent to me on Monday, April the 6th. I think that even a cursory review, review of this document evidences that this matter must be re-noticed in order for the planning board to have jurisdiction over the application because this is an entirely new application. For example, on page number seven of the attached document, it appears that Thayer Nursery Corporation is now applying for a special permit under section 3A of the Milton Zoning Bylaws. This is the provision that Robert Oldfield had used to obtain his original special permits in 1967 and 1987. Not only is this zoning relief, not only is this zoning relief entirely separate from the zoning relief that the other applicants sought, under the most recent bylaw amendment, it is also an entirely new applicant for zoning relief under Section 3A of the bylaws. As such, the Planning Board must provide the public with the notice that Thayer Nursery Corporation is seeking this new type of zoning relief. Furthermore, the formal addition of Maggie and Josh Oldfield to the application combined with the fact that all of the now named applicants are seeking zoning relief under the bylaw amendment to engage in uses and activities that were never previously identified in prior applications as accessory to any purported exempt agricultural use. That is, that an, art, uh, an artisan's farmer's market constitutes agritourism that is somehow accessory to an exempt agricultural use and therefore permissible. Evidence is that this most recent submission is an entirely new application. As such, the Planning Board must duly provide the public with notice and schedule a hearing in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 11. Failure to do so makes any special permit issued by the Planning Board to Thayer Nursery Corporation, the Oldfield Family LLC, and or Josh and Maggie Oldfield dead on arrival in any zoning appeal brought in land or superior court. 
In light of, the, of this information, I kindly request that the Planning Board refuse to entertain the application at tomorrow night's hearing, April 9th at 6.30 p.m., and comply with the notice requirements provided in Mass General Law 40A, Section 11. Thank you for your cooperation in this regard. Um, you know, uh, it seems a little tiresome to go through uh, the letter, uh, but uh, in that I was asked to do so, I'll, uh, I'll do it. Um, this memorandum supplements the previous, uh, previous memoranda submitted by Philip Johanning and John Rowe to this board on January 7, 2015 and March 23, 2015. In addition to the grounds set forth in those memoranda, Mr. Johanning and Mr. Rowe further oppose the application now purportedly made on behalf of Oldfield Family LLC, Thayer Nursery Corporation, F, uh, F. Joshua Oldfield, and Margaret Oldfield, collectively the applicants or petitioners for a special permit for landscaping business use on the properties uh, known as and numbered 217, 237, and 270 Hillside Street, as well as 0 and 24 Forest Street in Milton, collectively the subject property for the following reasons. One, additional objections. The additional amendments made to the already revised versions of the separate applications submitted to the Planning Board on March 25, 2015 and March 26, 2015 by the applicant's attorney only further hi highlight the, that neither the applicants nor the Planning Board have satisfied the notice requirements set forth in the relevant portions of the Mass Zoning Act, that is, Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Sections 9 and 11. Section 9 of the Act provides each application for a special permit shall be filed by the petitioner with the city or town clerk and a copy of said application. The special permit granting authority shall hold a public hearing for which notice has been given as provided in section 11 on any application for a special permit within 65 days of the date of filing of each application. Mass General Law Chapter 40A section 11 states in pertinent part, in all cases where notice of a public hearing is required, notice shall be given by publication in a newspaper of general circulation in the city or town once in each of two successive weeks, the first publication to be not less than 14 days before the day of the hearing and by posting such notice in a conspicuous place in the city or town hall for a period of not less than 14 days before the day of such hearing. Publications and notices required by this section shall contain the name of the petitioner, and he, he puts that in bold, a description of the area or premises street address, if any, and other adequate identification of the, air, of the location of the area or premises which is the subject of the petition the date, time, and place of the public hearing. This, and he puts this in bold, the subject matter of the hearing and the nature of action or relief requested, if any. In this case, Oldfield Family LLC and Thayer Nursery Corporation filed the original application with the town clerk on October the 12, uh, 21st, 2014. Public hearings on that application were held by the Planning Board on January the 8th, 2015 and February the 12th, 2015. However, on or about March 6, 2015, the Oldfield Family LLC and Thayer Nursery Corporation withdrew their original application and filed a second application with the town clerk that same day. A public hearing on their second application was held on March 25, 2015. However, on March 26, 2015, counsel for the Old, Oldfield Family LLC and Thayer Nursery Corporation submitted a revised version of the second application directly to the planning board. He did not file it with the town clerk. This revised version materially changed the second application by altering the very identity of the applicant seeking zoning relief from the planning board where the original version of the second application was filed on behalf of the Oldfield Family LLC and Thayer Nursery Corporation, the revised version was submitted on behalf of these two entities as well as Josh Oldfield and Maggie Oldfield. The addition of these new applicants is significant because the determination of each applicant's legal rights in July of 2012 is a procedural prerequisite under the relevant bylaw amendment. C. Joe Henning slash Rowe memorandum dated March 23, 2015. In essence, by adding Josh and Maggie to the revised version of the second application, the applicants have submitted a third application. Josh and Maggie are not the Oldfield Family LLC and Thayer Nursery Corporation and cannot bootstrap themselves 
to their application because the planning board must assess the legal rights held by each applicant in July of 2012 before it can proceed on the application. As such, the applicants must comply with the filing and notice requirements set forth in the Zoning Act, Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Sections 9 and 11, before the planning board can consider this third application. Notwithstanding these facts, the applicants are now bold enough to submit a fourth version of their application to this board. This was done on or about April 6, 2015. In it, they again name Josh, Maggie, the Oldfield Family LLC, and Thayer Nursery Corporation as the applicants. However, in this latest version, the applicants add still more uses to their proposal. That is, sale of bulk agricultural materials, masonry products, and retail items, as well as hosting artisan markets but under the guise that they constitute agritourism activities that are, neat, uh, that are either accessory to agricultural activities that are exempt under the Dover Amendment, Mass General Law 40A, Section 3, or somehow constitute pre-existing non-conforming uses. This is pure nonsense. Uh, nonetheless, the expansion of the applicant's uh, proposal, coupled with the addition of two new applicants, should make it abundantly clear to this board that it's now dealing with an entirely new application. And he says uh, in a note below, um, if either were true, there would be no need for the applicants to seek any zoning relief from the planning board because the uses would be exempt from local zoning law under either uh, Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 3 or Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 6. That is um, what he's saying is that um, Artisan's Market, for instance, is not um, uh, protected under the Dover Amendment because if it were, they wouldn't be here asking, asking for a special permit to allow such activities. So he's saying by the very fact that they're requesting a, uh, a special permit means that they are not protected. Um, if this were not enough, however, it appears from the language used in the fourth version of the application that Thayer Nursery Corporation is separately seeking a special permit from the planning board to sell only during the Christmas season cut trees, Christmas trees, boughs, holly, and wreaths grown or fabricated elsewhere than on the premises under Section 3A, 7D of the Zoning Bylaws. See application dated April 5, 2015 at page 5. This new zoning relief is likely sought because Thayer Nursery Corporation correctly recognizes that it could not acquire Robert Oldfield's rights in the 1967 and 1987 special permits that authorized him and his family to engage in these activities and must obtain its own special permit to carry them out. However, the planning board is not authorized under the bylaws to grant such relief. Moreover, Thayer Nursery Corporation should not be permitted to back its way into this type of special permit by burying its request deep within an already convoluted application submitted under a separate section of the bylaws and without um, compliance with the filing and notice requirements set forth in the Zoning Act. Conclusion. As stated above, the expansion of the applicant's proposal, coupled with the addition of two new applicants, clearly evidences that an entirely new application is before the board. As such, Zoning Act mandates compliance with filing and notice requirements before the Planning Board considers the merits of this application. All right. Anywhere. Now, um, <clears throat> It seems to me that uh, give, we, we will get a copy of this memo. I don't think that we'll um, um, determine the law tonight, and we will proceed with the hearing. Uh, but we will certainly uh, bear these issues. We'll look into the issues, and uh, 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 we may ask town council for a little bit of uh, a little bit of advice. Because this is something, I mean, revising applications is uh, sort of our stock in trade here at the planning board. And uh, it happens all the time. And if every time it happened, someone had to go and re-advertise, we wouldn't get anything done. Uh, if at I mean, least we wouldn't get anything done very fast. I, uh, I think what he's saying, though, is that these are major changes when you add applicants to an application that was previously submitted. When you add um, uses uh, that you're applying for, uh, he's saying this is not a, a, a slight change, this is a major change. 
and that the board is in fact obligated to determine the uh, the rights of each applicant and so uh, that's the purpose of of, uh, of filing when you make a change to the applicants themselves so um, okay this well, isn't a minor change all right I, 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 I see I see your point let's uh, uh, but we're not going to uh, we are going to continue this hearing uh, and uh, uh, we will determine tentatively whether or not we will proceed on we will allow this to be uh, um, to be filed subject to of course uh, uh, some legal review uh, so let's let's determine uh, um, are we inclined to uh, to let this revision be filed and to proceed on the basis of the revision or do we want to proceed on the basis of the application which they seek to revise? I, have a, uh, I don't know if it's a question, comment, or statement, but I will say that if you look at the language that was voted by town meeting last year, the activities that the planning board is allowed to grant a special permit for are in paragraph two, definition of landscaping business permissible activities. We cannot grant any other activities other than what's listed in here. So if somebody's applying under section three of whatever or under the agriculture, whatever else is out there, we're not involved in that. We cannot grant a permit for that. We can grant a permit for the things that are in paragraph two. That's it. And what's in paragraph two is supposed to be in what's in the application. So paragraph three of both the zoning and the application says what else is going on on the site. And that can be any description it wants to be because that's not what we're granting the permit for. But the permit is two. And so if I'm looking at this, this revision or any other revision or the original application, I expect to see in section two of the application only what's in paragraph two of the zoning and nothing else. Now, it's interesting because under nursery, under the um, uh, ZBA permit for nursery, uh, that allows the sale of Christmas trees and other related materials, as does paragraph two of the zoning. So the applicant can choose which permit they want to apply to that. But if they want it to be under this zoning, it needs to be in section two of their application. If they don't want the Christmas trees to be under this zoning, then it's under the ZBA and it's described in three. But everything else can only be what's in paragraph two. <coughs> Would you parallel? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So, for the purpose for purposes of this subsection, a landscaping business is defined as a business concern which operates to construct, install, and maintain laws, lawns, trees, yards, shrubs, gardens, patios, related grounds, and other outdoor areas which are owned by others. The landscaping business may own or lease real and personal property, employ employees, and may be authorized by special permit to own, lease, operate, and store vehicles and equipment reasonably necessary for business operations. The landscaping business may be authorized to sell trees, shrubs, sod, seed, loam, mulch, and related material, and may be authorized to sell stone, stone dust, gravel, pavers, landscape ornamentations, timbers and related materials needed to implement a landscape design. It may be authorized to sell firewood if substantial sales of firewood occurred in 2012. It may be authorized to sell Christmas trees and other ho holiday materials if substantial sales of such occurred in 2012. It may be authorized to provide snow plowing and snow and ice removal services for third persons, including the town. Such authorization shall be contained in a special permit issued by the planning board, which shall impose reasonable limitations, terms, and conditions to implement and attain the purpose of the subsection. Any activity authorized by the planning board shall be an activity which was conducted in 2012. 
Authorization of an activity shall be at the level no greater than the level of that activity existing in 2012 unless there is a reliable showing that a greater level would be consistent with the purpose of this subsection and cause no adverse effects on abutters or nearby residents. If necessary to achieve the purposes of this subsection, a level of activity less than the level in 2012 may be required. That's what we can authorize. Yes. All right. Uh, now, it seems to me that we were, as you recall, I have uh, suggested that the way we proceed was go to paragraph four and go through the lettered paragraphs A through S. Uh, and we got to uh, the landscape plan, which is C. Uh, but I have um, a couple of things. Um, a number of people may have comments, may have come here today to comment on the application, mm -hmm. uh, be it the uh, revised application or the, uh, we, we've got to figure that out too, or the uh, uh, application in the uh, bylaw. And they don't necessarily, it seems to me that we might hear from them. And we also have, we may have an updated drainage report, is that right? Um, no. No, we do okay. have, we do have some additional information. We have an updated plan. The, um, the snow has just finally left the property. Um, blessedly, the glacier is receding from our midst. Um, and there are some additional um, suggestions that you want to that, make that needs to be done. And to okay, but let, what, what, let's uh, uh, Let's, uh, uh, so we're going to have that. Mr. Joe Henning has a comment on something. Well, uh, during the last meeting, uh, it was suggested that um, Pam might uh, do a new layout for the nursery, a proposed layout. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know where that falls into all this, but I, I guess. Uh, I mean, we're going to go back to that section. Um, that will be after we take, after we figure out the revision, after we see what Mr. Cochran has to say about the plan, we're going to take some general comments from people who have come to be heard, and then we're going to go back to section four and uh, uh, proceed in the way we are originally uh, uh, originally planned. Now what about the revised plan? If we can approve a revised plan, it seems to me that uh, uh, the filing of a re revised plan, it seems to me that that would be a good idea since the revised plan is the current thinking of the applicant. Well, if, if I may with respect to that, and I think it's in my long practice before this board that often plans get modified based on comments from abutters and others based on comments and questions that come from members of the board um, that final plans are generally approved as part of the, the closeout of the hearing but um, often plans get modified to reflect changes that come in the discussions that take place with the board um, and, and I have no problem with doing that it simply is that um, the file is just full of plans and it seems to me we have to have order. Yes. Uh, and we and don't. We're one not. way of having order is that when you want to change something, you don't just send it to Tim. Um, you say to the board, I'd like to change this, and then the board um, can. Uh, so with respect, with respect to that, we're not drafting or having the engineers prepare new plans until we're ready to present something for consideration. There's, there's things in flux, particularly given the fact that the snow is, is gone. There's some drainage calculations and analysis that, that needs to be confirmed based on um, what's currently out there. So we will, be, we will be filing, we will request the board's permission to file an additional plan. It will show a couple of things. 
One was a, a modification to the existing conditions plan because the question arose was, is there septic um, on the property? And the answer is yes. There are four different locations for septic, and I can show them just very briefly. Um, there's one small septic area here just outside of the garden shop that handles the a bathroom uh, that is in upstairs, that's it, in the uh, garden shop. Uh, so there's one small uh, septic field here. There are two, one on either side of the residence that's noted as 270. And then there's a third or fourth uh, that services Josh Oldfield's property um, to the south, on the southerly side along Forest Street. Um, so those are the locations, the plan, the, the existing conditions plan, when we file modifications will show that. It will also show what I think the board and others saw when we did the site walk, which was the, um, the installation of, of a uh, proposed retaining wall that would serve as the base, and space, the base of a fence. Um, that's been, and there was some, um, uh, there's a channel, or not a channel, but a, a trench that was dug uh, with respect to that. That will be shown. And then with respect to that, we'll show some additional proposed um, uh, drainage plan, which will be a pipe, we think, will extend from there to tie into the proposed leach field. So there will be some additional um, modifications proposed with respect to that, with respect to the plans. But before we, before we file them, um, the engineer needs to get out and confirm elevations um, and locations. Okay, now on the uh, revised plan, I think it might be helpful if we could try and figure out uh, just exactly what we've got here. Mr. Henning, we're going to not hear from you all the time, but we will hear from you often. But I'm going to, I'm actually I making. I just like, respectfully, I'd like to say that, uh, and I, I've written this. Oh, come up and come okay. up, but, but you, you can't just, you can't be heard every two minutes but I have something that I think is important to add and that is that I have suggested before that what is created here is chaos no one knows exactly what's being applied for I don't even know if the board members know that they're looking at the current application I don't know what people are looking at when they vote uh, and what I have suggested previously and I think is a very good idea would be that someone like the secretary would keep a list of uh, amendments or changes that need to be made to the document, and they would all be made at one time prior to the vote. Rather than um, having this chaos of constant uh, change that makes it almost impossible, as, as my attorney Matt Dunn had stated last time, that um, the goalposts keep changing and we don't know where they are today. So would it not be a good idea for someone to, for the plan to remain the same we keep a list of changes that need to be made, then we tick them off of the final document. I, I don't know if you uh, saw My Town Matters, and uh, it, it, uh, Frank Schroth wrote an article called A Frank Look at the Special Permit Process, Thayer is the New Hendries. And what it talked about from Frank's perspective is the chaos that is going on in this room with respect to the planning board. And uh, he talks about all of these issues from a layman's perspective. So he's sitting outside uh, looking at it and he's saying, it seems chaotic. And I say, what can we do to bring order to the process? One of the things he talks about here is that when a, a, a subject it comes at the end of the meeting, like a new plan for the, for the nursery, that it would be taken up at the beginning of the immediate next one. When you talk about having, uh, let's say, uh, citizens come and start talking about things when we haven't even finished business from the prior meeting, it, it, you know, excuse me if it, if it doesn't seem chaotic. You know, uh, uh, it, it does. You know, you have to go through things in an organized fashion. You have to close open doors and move on. But we don't seem to be getting anywhere because we open a door and I don't know when it ever gets closed and we change per, uh, applications and uh, who knows what people are looking at or commenting on. It's an extremely difficult process 
And I, I think Frank Schroth made a very good comment. I don't know if who, who looked at it, but. Uh, I, I actually read it, and uh, uh, he's here, and uh, 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 I'm sure that he will write more. And uh, if he thinks there's a better way to run this hearing, uh, uh, he can suggest it. And uh, you, have say, you, have, you have suggested something, but I'm going to run the hearing the way I think it should be run. And uh, uh, when you get elected to the planning board uh, and are chairing, a hearing, you can do it your way. Uh, I don't think it's chaos. I at least understand uh, where we're going. Uh, but it is confusing. I, I will give you that. Now, one confusion that I have that I think might be worthwhile dealing with initially is just who, how do all these parties, uh, uh, Oldfield Family LLC, Thier Nursery, and Maggie and Josh all fit together? Because I've looked at the documents and there is a deed to the Oldfield Family LLC of certain property. And then there is a lease of other property to their nursery corporation, and we need to know just how they fit together. Why does their nursery corporation lease part of the property? Uh, how does uh, does Oldfield Family uh, LLC also lease to their nursery, uh, or how does? their nursery fit in with respect to that property. Uh, we, you know, Maggie and Josh signed the application as representing, uh, or not the application, one of the, the, the lease. They, they signed it as uh, representing their nursery corporation. Uh, presumably they are officers of the corporation, but we don't have the uh, corporate documents. Uh, we don't know much about Oldfield Family LLC. Uh, we don't know who was operating the nursery in 2012. Was it their nursery or was it